Well guys, today I will be going over modules and packages for Python, but before I go over that, let me go over a little bit with namespaces, nested functions, and the global keyword. So over here I have an, an example of a nested function. We have a first function called first function that assigns the value 10 to x to a variable x I've created. And we have a second function which grabs the global x, which is the same x module defined in the first function. However, it is not local to the second function because it's not within the namespace of the second function. So I have to use the global keyword to access something outside of its namespace. And then it changes the value of x to 45. So here I have a couple of print statements for the first function as well. First it will call x before calling the second function. And then it prints out calling the second function, where it calls the second function at line 10. And it shows the value of x after the second function has been called. And then we call our first function just to call it in general. And then it finally it will print out what x is in the global namespace, as in the overall namespace of the, of the script. So when we run that, it starts off with 10, as printed by line 8. Then printed in line 11, it changes to 10. But from line 14, it's changed to 45. So after the second function is called, x is, goes from 10 to 45 in the overall namespace. But thanks to the global keyword, it was accessible for the second function, even though it was initialized in the first function. And the value that it changed remained after the function was finished being called. So that is a simple example of how those three work together. Anyway, moving on. Um, I want to talk a little bit about modules. Just to get rid of these. So, what are modules? Here's the third one. So, modules refer to a file containing Python statements and definitions. A good example would be method A, which was a module from an earlier example I made, and method B, which imports method A. Basically, method A was a module that method B could import and utilize its functionality with. So, let me just work with this really quickly. Let me create module.py and let me just add in some functionality in it, just as a refresher. So I've created a function that adds a and b and then it returns the result. From any functions in your modules, it needs to return function, I mean the return keyword to return the output of the functions you create because the output needs to be sent into the functions that call it so it can access the information that's presented to it. And just to test it out, we import module, the module.py that we created, then we call the add function and assign the numbers we want to add. We run this. Oh. oh, it has to print it. It returns it, but there's nothing here asking it to print it. And there we go, it adds them, and here's our result. Actually, hmm. but yeah, that's a quick lesson on modules. If you want to learn more about modules and all the fun functions, you can, all the things you can do with them, Check out this link, uh, python.org forward slash 3 forward slash pi dash module index.html. That'll give you more information. Now we can use more, in order to use modules, we need to use import. Alright, so now that we covered modules, um, let me show you guys how we, we can use the import function in different ways. So here I'm importing the math module which is a built-in module in Python that gives us access to all the mathematical operations and functions that Python comes with pre-built. And one function or one value inside the math module is pi 3.14 and we can print that since we have access to math. Now, instead of importing just math, one thing you can do is you can import it as a variable. So import math, but I use the as keyword m. m is the variable that I created that stores the 
all the functionality available to me from the math module. And I can call it m.pi. So when I run this, the value of pi is 3.14159, etc. And another way we can do it is using the from keyword. So from math, which is the module in Python, using the from keyword, we can reach for a certain function or a variable within the module we're accessing. So from math, import pi. And now we can get rid of m.py and we just and we can just use pi because it's importing a specific value, a specific variable. We don't need the m dot or math dot. And it still presents us with pi. Now one more thing we can do, if you want to import every available variable or function from a module, you use the star key. So from math import star. Um, this should still work, it does, but let me just try this. I mean, if you just use import math, it should still work, except you need to now put in math.i. Whereas if you used from math import, actually no, it's not the same. Yeah, if you use from math import, it takes all the variables and functions, so you don't need the math.py, you can just use pi natively. So I'm not exactly sure why it's giving me the unused wildcard. Maybe it's updated, so I'm probably gonna have to find a more recent version. I'll probably do it in another video, but I mean it still works, so it's still good. Now, if you create your own modules in Python, you definitely want to save them in the same folder that's being accessed right now by our IDE, our Microsoft Visual Studio. So module is accessible, test is the file we've been running, so module and test are both in the same folder, so it is easy, easily accessible. However, if you have a module somewhere on your machine that's not accessible or not easily accessible, what you're going to do is use the following import sys, which gives your file access to the entire system, and then you can update the paths your IDE will search within your system. So this is a, these are a few basic examples, but if you want you could add in, say, d double backslash, um, whatever folder you, you're, you have the package you want to gain access to is in, so d um, documents Double slash, double backslash, um, lib, double backslash. Your, your module. And if you do that, it will add the path of your custom module to the available paths available to your IDE. So this is one way you can do that. Just to enter that. And what else? Um. Oh yeah, creating packages. All right, so the last thing I want to go over is um, creating your own custom packages. So the way packages work in Python, um, there's two ways of doing it. If you're using 3.8 or 3.7 or any recent version of the 3.x Python pack, Python, yeah, Python packages. If you're using Python 2.7, there is a very specific way of creating a package. So here I've created two folders in my uh, introduction namespace folder. And inside test package, this is how you would create a package specifically for 2.7. First thing you need to do is you need to create a file and name it double underscore init double underscore. Oh uh, no, I don't want to. No, I don't want to open up Adam. Oh, okay, it's closed. Alright, um. Oh yeah, init. It's right over here. So this. Or if you're simply using this to create a package, you can leave this empty. As long as your folder has a file called double underscore in it double underscore dot pi, that should recognize it as a package folder for Python 2.7, as a 
as well as for any Python variant that's 3.2 or older. Basically, if you're using the init, full init file to create a package, it's, gonna, ah, it's going to be a regular package. However, the more recent versions, you don't need to do that. I have another folder called non-package. Well, it wasn't supposed to be a package, but it ended up being a package anyway. This one does not have the init file, but it is a package. It's a namespace package, and it does not require the init file, and it is available for the more recent versions of Python, such as 3.7 and 3.8. And in both packages, I have a module called package test. Let me pull that up. And it has a single function called package output, where it will simply output whatever string I put into it, plus the word there. So to test it out, from test package, so this is the custom package I've created, import the module package test, and then I can call in the function. No, I don't want to do that. dot package output then I will enter the what's it called yeah the string hello so now that I run it it prints out hello there and yeah this is an example of how you can create your own package your a regular package and use that to store your modules inside and then call them using another script. Now there is an advantage for using the double underscore init dot pi file pi file um, if you're doing some more advanced package management, you can use the init.py to manage any of the other modules that are within this package. For example, if you want them to be called a certain way, or if you want them to be initialized when the package is imported, you can add functionality in the init.py. And this works for both versions, whether it's a namespace package or a regular package. It should work just fine. However, if you're using a namespace package, you do not have the init.py, so you don't need it. And to test that out, um, let me import the non-package package that I have created. So from non-package, which is a really ironic name, import package test, which is copied into that package as well. And yeah, it still works, except this time it's using a namespace package and not a regular package. Basically, if you're using, well, let me just write this down. If you are using Python 3.2 or lower, such as Python 2.7, use the double underscore init.py when creating the package. However, for Python 3.3 and newer, you do not need the underscore init.py file to create a package, but it will be created as a namespace package instead, but if you do create the double underscore init.py file, then it will create your package as a regular package, which will allow you to modify and add functionality to your package by adding code to the underscore init.py file. So that's the difference between creating a package with the file or versus without it. And if you're using the different versions, you will absolutely need it if you're using the older versions, but the newer versions, you have the option to use it or not. Anyway, yeah, that should be it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do for the next video, but I'm going to think about it and come up with something 
yeah, I'll come up with something for the next video. Anyways, I hope you guys have a good one.